Yes, I'm going to introduce, these are the folks, the good folks, that we've all been reading about in the North Central Review, from the Wollong Future Hub, um, which happily, so many people have volunteered to decorate and to renovate and do all sorts of exciting things, and we are welcoming back again, Selena Gretsch. That's right, Roger. <laughs> and Emma, question mark. <laughs> Emma Linton. Up, up close here. Emma Linton. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to you. Thanks for having us back. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. We, know, we know Emma from old. We are old friends of anyone that's uh, attended the Magpie and Stump Hotel in Wandong at the weekend's did you work other than weekends, or were you...? Yes, sometimes during the week as well. And um, so anyone, you, you're, if you could see her, you would remember her <laughs> smiling face. Yeah, Emma, don't, don't look at him when you talk. It's best not to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it does help you. If you keep staring at him, you'll get sick. <laughs> uh, so just don't look at him, just talk in the microphone. That would be really good. Uh, come on, Roger. Uh, okay, we are... What are you looking at me for? I'm waiting for you to say something. Oh, 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 oh. Do I do have to do everything <laughs> again? <laughs> anyway, the Wall of Future Hub is going to uh, be many things to many people. And a little team headed by Selena and, of course, lots of her friends from all around the area. But Selena has been, in the past, the... Um, Figurehead, shall we say? The, the, the lone soldier, sort of. Yeah. Um, but I'm very happy now to, uh, to have a new team member um, in Emma. Um, we've been working together for a week and a day now, um, and it's and been fantastic. Survive. We have survived. We have thrived, Roger. It's been fantastic. We've gotten so much. Uh, you'd think, you know, twice as many people, you get twice as much work done. I think we've done three or four times the amount of work. Um, you know, it's just been lovely to have um, another person um, just as, if not more passionate um, than I am about what we're doing. Um, and we've just, we've had some great brainstorming sessions. You should see our walls. I mean, luckily they're, they're painted white, but we've had bits of paper everywhere, coloured texture and brainstorming sessions. And, you know, it looks like a bit of a, um, you know, a, a madhouse sometimes with all the things stuck up on the wall, but you know we're just uh, getting it all down on paper and trying to record it as we go so we don't forget all the great ideas we've had. <laughs> Before we go any further, what is the hub? Okay, so the hub is a community-driven um, space. Um, so it used to be the old police station. We've got a grant to... Um, this is in Mullen. This is in Mullen. So it's on the corner of High Street and Watson Street. You might have seen it. It looks like an old house, um, but it used to be the police station. Um, and um, we are converting it into a, a community space um, with also the youth focus, but not, not just on youth. Um, and we're in the process now of renovating and refurbishing the building with the aim to open very soon, hopefully um, by the beginning of September. Um, and then we really are looking forward to um, talking to the community about how they want to use the space. This isn't about what I want or what Emma wants or what the partners want to have there. This is really, um, you know, an exciting opportunity for the community to come and say, hey, what about this idea? And it's already happening. I've had people this week. I've got um, two young ladies who have um, decided to um, project manage uh, starting up a community garden. And they've come to me with their idea and we're supporting them and helping them. This whole um, space is about building capacity in the community. Um, so they've got the idea, fantastic, because I'm not an ideas person, but I'm really good at helping them plan, strategize, how can we do this, um, what do we need, what's the timeline, and they're going to run this project and it's going to be fantastic. And along the way, they're going to bring the rest of the community with them. And uh, just on Sunday this weekend, I had another gentleman come in and say, hey, I'd really like to start a repair cafe. Can I do that here at the Wallen Future Hub? Fantastic, great idea. Bring your idea to me, tell me who's involved, tell me um, you know, what you're thinking and I will support you in whatever way I can, whether that's through planning or um, you know, getting some marketing together for you so that you can advertise it, whether that's on Facebook or in the local community, and we can get that started. So even though the doors aren't open yet, that community um, engagement and capacity building has already begun, so that's really exciting. And you've had um, quite a bit of contact with Love in Action, of course, because... Um, they're looking for some space, Absolutely. particularly when it comes to Christmas, and they're starting to put their uh, Christmas.
Christmas hampers together for the needy families. Absolutely, they are absolutely itching to get in, and we um, we had a meeting yesterday, and there's a Selena, we're itching to get in. How soon can we get in? So um, we're looking to make that happen very very soon. We're just trying to get some um, some some security doors put on the old garage space so that it's more functional as a as a storage space. So if there's anyone out there that um, does garage roller doors or security sliding doors. Feel free to give me a call or reach out. Um, we're looking at some options at the moment and it's, uh, it's been a little bit tricky to find the right trade. Um, but um, we're hoping that once those doors are on, we've got a couple more rooms to paint, Love in Action can move in and, and continue. And, you know, they haven't stopped doing the amazing work they're doing, but they just want to add to it. And having that, that space where they can, um, you know, I think at the moment there's seven or eight houses full to the brim with, um, with you know, food that's been donated or clothing or items. And so it'd be really exciting for them to have a central base that they can use and, and um, we're excited to make that happen for them. Yeah, well, there's a load of, um, of uh, goods coming up from Bayswater, uh, pamper ones for women. So I don't know how many, it's probably... 500. 500 they've Five, collected to date. 500 that are going to be um, shared between uh, Love in Action Wallen and Love in Action Broadfit. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Um, that's a, luxury packs. Yeah, with uh, luxury toiletries, shampoo bottles, all the like. So, you know... Um, I with think that's a really with exciting. The nominal value, I believe, of two hundred dollars a pack. Oh, well, that's mm. just amazing. I didn't know that, Roger. You've got all the numbers. Yeah, well, they, they're, they're coming from an organisation called Pinchapoo. That's true. And we won't tell you what that is because this sounds <laughs> illegal. But um, originally, Pinchapoo was formed to um, pinch a shampoo or something mm -hmm. from motels as you moved around. They're consumables and they go with the cost of running the room. So people said, well, take everything you're entitled to, then donate it. Mm. And what they've done is put together uh, these luxury packs to pamper, uh, say, single mums looking yeah. after a family and trying to feed them. Not much money left to uh, shampoo or mm. things like that. So they put these packs together for them. Uh -huh. Perhaps I can get a couple of them. I can sell them on he made it something. I don't think that's the idea. No, that's no, not, no. Not, not, no, not the spirit. No, 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 no. You, knowing you, Julian, you'd break the packs down to individual items. I, well, I would probably make And a thousand percent profit on each. Yeah. 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 Only a thousand. Oh. Well, yeah. yet another country business gone bust. <laughs> well, and you know, it's just amazing because there's stories like this happening every day. Um, and the more that the word about love in action and what's happening in the Wollongong community gets out, the more people are supporting it as well. So it's been fantastic just to hear stories like that um, become more and more common. People, you know, um, helping out and, and seeing the, the, the joy of, of giving back to the community. So it's been fantastic. I'll, I'll give you one story there. Um, someone who's needing a little bit of help at the moment is someone who, Julian puts his hand up, the only help you need is uh, now the euthanasia laws in. <laughs> uh, I am. Uh, I'm not, I'm not. The, I can see close friendship here. There is a friend of Love in Action. In fact, she's the right-hand lady of Love in Action, Kim Head, mm -hmm. who's had some unfortunate accidents and is not... Um, as capable as she should be. She is a monster worker for Love in Action. Uh, but unfortunately, she's hurt herself, and the husband uh, is unfortunately uh, uh, wheelchair bound or mm -hmm. a, a, a totally paraplegic gentleman. And Kim Head is desperately looking for someone to get some timber, cut timber to her. Her woodshed is running down, and she's not able to. So, if anyone out there is listening, um, you just mentioned Kim Head around Wallen and you, you'll soon find her. Uh, she does She needs a little bit of timber to keep her fire going. Mm -hmm. And she does lots of amazing work with Love in Action and in the community and caring for her husband. And um, you know, she's always the first one to put her hand up to help others. So, it'd be great if we could um, yeah, get behind her and, and help her out in her time of need as well. And the story, of course, is that Kim Head and her husband were a couple that needed the help of Love in Action some time ago and because she was given a, a, a leg up um, she did a turnaround and is now one of the hardest working of all the Love in Action people.
actually. Which is a wonderful, wonderful story. And, that, and, that, and how amazing is that for, um, you know, and, and I think that's just what Love and Action is all about, you know, um, and I think, you know, seeing that um, people have been helped and then come back and then give back, and that's exactly what we've seen at, um, at the Hub as well with the working bees and, um, you know, the, the amount of people that have come in and said, well, Love and Action helped me when I needed it and I'd love to, to give back in some small way, even if it's just painting a wall. And, and you know, there's no obligation to do that. It's just people doing it out of the generosity of their heart, so... Um, they're really amazing, aren't they? They really are. are. They really are. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, that's, that is the actual engine that drives this community is, in fact, the community members. Absolutely. We can do all sorts of things with grants, and we need grants. Don't, don't rubbish getting a grant. But, in the end, the actual work, the actual drive, the actual... Um, broadcasting of it, the actual everything is down to the individual, joins with other individuals and they become a very big force. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and speaking of big forces, um, you know, now that we've got a, um, a great um, team member on board, I'd love to introduce Emma if that's okay. Yes, and, um, do. Oh, I'm just about to yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, come on, Rachel, we need to get it. Um, so I'd love to introduce Emma Linton um, to the community um, and give Emma an opportunity to, to tell everyone why she um, wanted to get involved with the Wall and Future Hub. She absolutely wowed us at the interviews. Um, and, um, yeah, if she'd like to, to take the reins, tell, um, let everyone know why you're uh, interested in this project, Emma. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm really, really excited to be involved. Um, very passionate about this project and, and the vision. I can, something that I can really get behind. Mind, just like we all can and um, my, work, my background is in sort of the digital space as well as I've worked in education as well and um, so I'm really keen to sort of bring some of my um, like experience and skills there and um, really sort of um, throw my weight behind this cause and, and do everything I can to make it happen and um, so yeah that's, that's a little bit about me and, and why I really love um, the World Future Hub. I, I love the idea of collaboration and how that you've got lots of different organizations and, and people who are doing great things in the community and the way that they're all coming together because um, you know alone we're strong but together we're stronger and um, it's been really exciting to see that all in action. How long have you been there Uma? Um, a week now so a week. very fresh on the job. <laughs> it's throwing me into the deep end here popping me on the radio which is what I love for the <laughs> and, well, Congratulations Emma it's um it's, it's, uh, people might say, well, it's a, it's a job, it's a, it's a function, it's something to do. But in actual fact, you'll find, like all of us that are involved in this community welfare and community work, it actually becomes a privilege to work in this area because of the people you meet and the ideas that people come to you with and say, how about this? And then six months, a year later, you actually see it in fruition. Someone's idea is actually taken off and boom. Mm -hmm. I remember Love in Action, of course, from the very early days when they had about 10 members. It's now way over 2,000. Close to 3,000 now. Out yeah, of Walsall. Mm -hmm. yep. And now we've got Broadford and Craigie Byrne likely to come online very soon. So these ideas, which are just, and you know, they come from a couple of people sitting down saying, well, why don't we do something? Mm -hmm, absolutely, and for us, it's all based on you know these premises of having a vibrant community. You know, um, and we've talked about, um, especially with Jeremy from Love in Action, about those those five um, five I guess pillars of a vibrant community, and that's connecting people, connecting with conversations, collaborations, um, cro cro sorry co creativity, and co care, and that's I think how a vibrant community. Um, Books, um, and that's what you know. That's what I love. What, you know, I've only been in Wollongong for, for a bit less than two years, and I've seen all of those things um, even before I was involved with the Wollongong Future Hub. But now they've just been magnified um, by what I see at the Wollongong Future Hub, and I'm, I'm seeing that every day. I mean, we had a um, we put out a call to, to the Rotary um, to the local Rotary here in Kilmore, and um, we're asking for mentors for our block competition. And we had a lovely gentleman, Steve, come down to to the Hub, and we had a two and a half hour conversation um, about 
community and values and um, you know the way that he might be able to contribute and, and what we're about and it was just a, um, a fantastic conversation and, and um, um, I'm sure that Emma's got some things that she could say about that as well. Yes absolutely it was really exciting to talk to Stephen and hear about his um, experiences and also the great work the Rotary is doing in the community and um, what I loved about it too is that that was still working with those partnerships as well and, and being able to you know link in with the Rotary as well it's all about sort of us complementing the work that we do and helping each other out. Yeah I think often um, especially in the grant space community groups can sometimes be feel like they're competing against each other for mm, the, same, yeah. the same pool of money and I rather like to think about it as we're all part of this spider web in this in the shire and we're all one little node on that spider web and if we can work together um, then we can achieve so much more than if we are working alone in silos. And you know something with the words which you put together as the pillars, if you like, of, of what we're doing is in fact what the indigenous folk were doing thousands of years ago, mm. but without the name, all helping each other, yeah. all providing according to their means mm. and their skills mm. and so on to exist. Absolutely. So it really, what you're doing now is taking a community back to its basic values and um, and looking after its own, caring for those that are um, disabled in some way, either by financial disability or physical mm -hmm. or mental, and um, and saying that one of us, absolutely, we have to look after. We have to we look have after to each other. Yep. And yep. we share. And there'll be times in our lives where, you know, we'll be doing really well and we'll be able to have the capacity to help others. And then there'll be times where, you know, through maybe no fault of our own, a job loss or an illness that, you know, we might need to ask for help. And I would love to think that, um, you know, that um, we can all support each other and then in our times of need that, that the community supports us as well. And I think that's what it's all There's about. someone there to hold, to have your bank. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And if you, if you keep streaming, um, and the next guest in here, Paddy Devine, will be talking about exactly the same thing. Um, but in terms of, in times of uh, uh, catastrophe, in terms of uh, bushfires and other things, how we can bring all the forces together, cooperate, not only within Mitchell Shire, but dragging the knowledge gained from other places, yeah. pulling it in and using it. Why reinvent the wheel? Mm. Um, so that's, you know, it's it. And we play part of it, Julian and I, in this little program we have. Absolutely. So Fridays, we, we help to disseminate this information. Someone else picks up the story, tells their friends, mm -hmm. and away it goes. It goes like a galloping horse. Well, anyone that's used Facebook knows how the horse gallops sometimes. <laughs> a little bit out of control very often. Um, and, uh, but, but anyway, it's time. fantastic. Yeah, it's been it's such a big part of also what we're doing. You know, we're not just a physical space, but we're also a, a digital space. So it means that, you know, um, what we do in person can also be supplemented by what we're doing online as well. So Love and Action have an, an awesome following in their community. And we've launched a Facebook page for the World Future Hub as well. So it's just another way of people coming together and, and sort of accessing that support. I think you picked one as a spot on place to do it. It's such a growth area. Absolutely. Uh, I can't imagine what it's going to be like, let's say, it's five years' time. And, and that's exciting, and it also brings some challenges as well. It oh, means big that, challenges, you know, huge. we're all, you know, I mean, the obvious one is traffic. We're all experiencing <laughs> the traffic, but, um, you know, we're getting a lot of um, young families moving into the area, a lot of people from different cultural backgrounds, and that's super exciting. We just need to make sure we have some infrastructure so there's things yeah. for people to do. I mean, our focus on youth is really because there's, there's not a lot of things for young people to do in the Mitchell Shire. Um, and so, you know, we want to we want to help um, break down that barrier. Um, you know, we'd love to have a space where young people can come in after school and, and, um, and do some activities. And, and Emma um, has um, been doing some work at Alamada Youth Services um, that um, she could talk about as well. And they're doing some great stuff with youth there. And, um, and I love the idea of, you know, um, each of us doing different things in the community and then bringing that back to, to the Wallen Future Hub and, and bringing that best practice um, to the Wallen Future Hub. So, um, Emma, if you wouldn't mind speaking a little bit about what you're doing at Alamada, that would be fantastic too. Yeah, absolutely. So we are doing a project which is really an evaluation of the program, but um, part of my role in there is also um, telling them 
their story and really um, looking at where where they've come and how far they've come. And it was such a privilege to be able to stop in on Alabama services and, and see it's a community centre located in King Lake and it's a really small, cosy community. And basically, um, you know, a whole bunch of school kids come to this centre after school hours and they just hang out. Like there's, you know, pool tables and there's uh, air hockey and some, some people just, you know, a group of grade six um, girls I saw just sitting with one of the volunteers having a cup of tea in the chat and, you know, people playing cards. But there was just a beautiful um, sort of atmosphere about the place and a, a great sense of community. So that's something that we would love to be able to, to bring to, to Wallen as well. And would be fantastic. Yeah, and Wallen is the perfect platform for that because there's already such a great community spirit here. Exactly. I've um, sort of recently um, started living closer to the suburbs and um, there's a big difference, I think, in the way that our people interact with each other in country towns. Everyone sort of bumps into each other in the supermarket and, um, you know, it ends up being a 30-minute conversation halfway through doing the weekly <laughs> shop. And, so that's what I really like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yeah. And of course, at the end comes at the other end of the age scale when people are retiring, mm-hmm. come from very active lives, and are looking for something to do. Um, volunteering is obviously, you say, volunteering in parentheses, and it covers a, a multitude of tasks. Mm-hmm. Um, both have got to get benefit out of it, and so you get things like men's sheds mm-hmm. starting. And men's sheds are keeping people active mentally and physically, learning new skills, but they're also using those to help people like you with a project like Absolutely. the hub. Yeah, and um, yeah, we've got. Um, I'm learning so much from my um, my colleagues that are involved in this project, and you know, I think that's exciting as well. That passing on of the knowledge and the skills, um, and that's something that you know I'd love to bring into the hub as well, whether that's through you know something like sewing classes or the repair cafe or, you know, that opportunity for people who are really skilled and they've spent, a, um, you know, a great deal of their life working on their skills and, and having this great um, knowledge base, it would be a shame for that to be lost, you yeah, know, um, and exactly. I think, especially in, in our younger generation, you know, we are losing some of those skills on, you know, how to fix something if it's broken or, you know, we've got this instant world of Uber Eats and, and instant gratification and, um, you know, oh, things are just so we throw them away, but if we could learn how to fix things and, um, and, and extend their life by another yeah, 25 you know, 30 percent, yeah, exactly. I think that, um, and I think there are a lot of young people that would like to do that, they just don't know how, or they, you know, they don't have grandparents around anymore, or they don't have that, that family support. Um, but why can't we share that across the community and, and act your, like a village? Your repair cafe actually rings a terrific bell with me because I discovered yesterday on television part of an ABC remote station or whatever it be is a thing called Repair Barn I think it is and it's exactly that there are some skilled craftspeople permanently there like a leather worker a horologist with the clocks um, antiques and all these things and they picked up four examples of things to be repaired by the school for once. Yeah. And some of the work was so fascinating. So I've I've now found a new program on Mondays to watch on the ABC. Fantastic. Well, maybe uh, we can get some repair cafe open. You can come and watch it live. Oh, yeah. Of course I would. I'm a a leather worker by hobby. I might even come down and be able to show people a little bit of old leather work. Oh, that would be fantastic. I'm going to hold you to that. I uh, enjoyed a little bit of leather work. Mm. And I think the the thing that um, I think sometimes maybe doesn't come across is, you know, um, you know, even with working bees or things like repair cafes, the connections that people make during those times. So, you know, we had um, we had some lovely people out over the weekend. We just had a working bee, and look, yes, we're painting, and painting's not extremely exciting work. But the conversations that we were having, the relationships that we're building, I think are long lasting. You know, we're getting to know each other, and I think that's the exciting part of that working community. Um, which is different from you know working in a, in a 
a corporation, you get to really know people that you're that you're um, interacting with. Yeah. We've had you know conversations where I haven't had them with people that I've known for five years um, because we're just open to having those conversations. We're in the right space, um, and you know there's there's no fluffing around. We're like, hey, what are your values or what are you about? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's amazing, and I'm finding that it's probably the most unexpected thing um, that's coming out of this is just. And the amazing conversations we're having, and, and I was at the Working Bee on Sunday, and Lisa was at the Working Bee on Saturday, and she said the same thing. She had three amazing women that came, um, none of them knew each other, I don't think, and by the end of it, they were laughing and, and getting along like a house on fire, like they'd known each other for years. So um, I would encourage people who are maybe a little bit hesitant or think they don't have the skills or, or um, are maybe not as confident to get involved, just come along with the goal of meeting one new person. And I think that, you know, that could have a real, make a real impact on some people's lives. If they have, and know. what you're saying is so very important in our particular neck of the woods. Absolutely. Because there are so many new people mm-hmm. coming to us from beverage upwards and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of younger people are now looking at the country. <gasps> mm-hmm. you know, suddenly they see real trees yeah. and green grass. Yeah. Uh, but more than that, they come having left families behind or whatever, their point of contact, school friends, they come to a new area, the kids need um, contact with Mm -hmm. people, but the parents certainly do, and it's the relationships that are made through work at the hub and work through Love in Action and all the other groups where these people form relationships which become friendships, Mm -hmm. which become support groups in their own. Absolutely. And suddenly out of the blue you feel as if you're all part of this and have been for years and years. And look, if if I had two people come to the hub and they met because they were painting a wall and they make a friendship and I never see them again, but they go on to live, you know, have a great friendship for the next 20 years, that's a great, you know, that's a great thing. You know, that's that's a win. That is an absolute win. So this is, you know, um, it's not about, you know, just getting free labour to to, um, to paint the hub because, I mean, we, we, we've got the grant money. We could we could paint the hub next week if we wanted to, but it's about having those moments when people get to interact with each other um, and get to know each other and build that community. It's like tree planting. I was at a tree planting ceremony down on the creek in Kilmore one day. Uh, we were doing an outside broadcast, and I remember... Uh, a mother coming down with a child and said, saying, that there is the tree I planted 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was now quite a flourishing. And I just thought, isn't it lovely to be able to say to your child, I did that. Mm-hmm. And the child be able to say, you know, the other kids, well, my mum put that, you know, it, it's like a, yeah. and it's a permanent reminder of the effort you put in. The tree is growing there. And the hub growing and the, and the thoughts around the hub. Mm. Fantastic work, girls. Thank you very much. And you're going to be at the front of it. Yeah. And I love what you were saying about the, the tree planting example because I think, too, um, we'd love the community to have a sense of ownership over the space as well and to really, um, for, for it to feel like a second home for them as well, which is why, you know, we're really excited to do the block competition and, you know, have young people in the community come and decorate the space because we feel like we, we want this to be your space. We want um, you to, you know, showcase the personality of Wallen through this building, even though it's just the shelf for everything that we're doing and you know the the real heart of what we're doing is the community we'd love you to you know showcase um what we're all about through this and have you got space. much room around the building itself ground uh, well there's there's a there's a bit of um a bit of land at the front of the building um and there's a bit at the back that we share with the um the old police residence which is now the the land the local um employment um local learning and employment network um and so we are um hopefully um going to be able to share that space especially at the back to have some some um, garden beds um, and, at, and at the front as well. There's, there's, so there's plenty of space to have some garden beds and we're thinking even having um, some, some picnic tables and a place where people can, you know, especially in the summertime, have some barbecues, some cookouts, maybe cook some of the produce that we're growing. Um, I think that would be fantastic. So um, keep keep an eye on that space. There's um, some exciting ideas that we've got there. And... Um, 
And um, even with the with the block competition as well, I think you know that that sense of ownership that is really important. Um, and um, I've got a, a great volunteer, Nikki Simas, um, who's helping me with been reaching out to all the local schools um, to help to, to if they'd like to contribute some artwork to the to the um, hub building as well. Mm. So we're really you know trying to encapsulate right across the community, and you know we're going you know to a whole bunch of primary schools and high schools and asking them you know in term three and four, would you like to work on an art project that we can display in the, in the hub? Um, so if you're from a local school um, and you're interested in getting involved or a local art, art teacher, then feel free to get in touch with, them, with us at the Wallen Future Hub. Um, I'm going down to um, Our Lady of the Way Primary School in Malara, um, in uh, I think it's in Malara Waters or, or next next right next door to there um, in that new area of Wallen to meet with the art teacher there on Friday. Um, and the word was getting out. People started to call me and say, "Hey, I heard about the Wallen Future Hub. What are you guys doing? How can I get involved?" I had a, um, a psychologist call me the other day that you know was like, "Oh, I heard what you guys are doing, and I'm curious. Like, how could I get involved?" And um, so the word's getting out there, and you know, my phone's ringing off the hook. So it's Isn't fantastic. It it's 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 brilliant. That to me is means that we're doing a good job because people are hearing about it. And you know something, but. but it's strange to say, but to people like you that are working so hard for it. You are, in fact, very privileged to be involved in this oh, because absolutely. what you're doing there, and I think in, in my experience of life, what has been most successful are the communities, um, small communities doing their own thing mm -hmm. and doing something successfully which can then be transplanted as love in action mm -hmm. to another neighbourhood, to another, another, right across the country, or in many cases internationally. Absolutely. And how wonderful it would be if 10 years, 15 time, years time you were able to say, well I was in there right at the beginning of yeah. the hub, and now there are hubs scattered right across the country. You know, that is something... That's the that dream, right? Well, it's a dream that, you know, you have to put the effort in oh, to get absolutely. it. But what a dream to have to say, I actually contributed that to the world. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, it sounds grand to well, the world, but in actual fact, that's something tangible. Absolutely. And, you know, being a member of the Wallen community, I mean, I live in Wallen. I'm invested. This is my community. This is, I'm building what, um, you know, what I'd like the community to be like and also what other people are telling me they'd like the community to be like. So, and I'm not doing it alone. We've got an amazing um, group of people involved and, and hopefully many more that we haven't met yet that are, you know, yet to find out about us. Um, but, you know, speaking about, um, you know, this being kind of like a, a pilot project and I, I think of it often as a, a pilot for a future um, wall and future hub or a pilot for a, a future hub somewhere else. Um, and part of what we're doing there is we're also trying to network in with other people and other things that other communities are doing. So Emma and I are heading um, in August to a conference in Canberra. It's called... Um, um, the, the, power to the people, citizen driven communities um, and so there's two days of exciting workshops and speakers um, and I'm so looking forward to hearing about what other communities are doing and then bringing back that knowledge to the Long and Future Hub and bringing back those connections and But networks. just think where you're going, there's a building there which um, doesn't contribute much to the country <laughs> and you could have one of the biggest hubs of all <laughs> with, with a flag pass and a flag mast and everything all already done for you. Yeah. Just think of that. I oh, know. Well, <laughs> I was there last year at Parliament House and speaking to some of the MPs about Wallen. Um, so uh, I will continue that on. <laughs> well, we do wish you well and um, we'll certainly mention the hub to uh, Steph Ryan when she comes in next Tuesday mm -hmm. to see us. We'll be mentioning that as one of the yeah. examples of how this vibrant community we're all living, we all live in, um, is actually doing things for itself. Absolutely. We need to see money from governments and from donations from the public, mm -hmm. but we use that seed money to go out and do things rather than say, give us some money and we'll spend it. And, you know, mm -hmm. We are actually turning that money, a little bit of money, into a living, dynamic thing. Absolutely.
Absolutely. And so, girls, thank you so much. And how, how can anyone get in touch with you, Selena, if, um, they, if they want to get involved? Oh, if they'd love to get involved, they can reach out to us. Um, we've got a Facebook page, so it's facebook.com forward slash Wall and Future Hub. Um, I've got, we've got an email address. Mine is facilitator at wallandfuturehub.org.au. Or you can call me directly on my mobile, 0401 I love getting phone calls and texts from people who are interested, so um, feel free to give me a call and... Uh, and um, we'll see, you know, if, even if you're not sure what you can do, I'm happy to have a coffee and talk about what your interests are and I'm sure we can find some way that they could um, get involved.